Hi and welcome back. I'm Joe Carswell and this is a mini lesson on what I consider a very important tool. That's a utility knife. Let's go through the knife, what it does and all the variations of it. A utility knife is needed in every toolkit. It doesn't matter what trade you're doing. It doesn't even matter what work you're doing. I can't get through a job without using this multiple times and it comes in a lot of variations and this would be one of your simplest versions. I love this tool. This was my father's tool. I also hate this tool because of the way it's made. It's a fixed uh, blade in this tool. There's two parts to a utility knife. You're going to have the body or the handle and you're going to have a removable blade. A fixed blade means that it is uh, clamped in here and it does not move. That's great when you're cutting, but when you want to store it, that's problematic. This tool is very short too. If you have a, a small hand, this might fit you well. It's very heavy. It's made of a heavy metal, which is cast iron. This tool is an antique, uh, probably from the 40s or the 50s. We don't make them like this anymore, typically. This is a typical retractable blade knife. And this one has a button on it here. And as we push this button, we can slide that blade in and out. It will even lock into different lengths. If we don't need the whole blade, we don't have to push it all the way out. When we're done and we want to store it safely, we can pull it all the way back into the handle. This is a better option for a blade that you're using all the time. You pull it out for a moment and then you put it back in. A utility knife is a razor blade with a handle. Inherently, it's dangerous and we need to treat it with respect and be aware of that at all times. So if you're not using this knife, make sure that you retract it. This is probably one of my biggest issues on a job is remembering to retract my blade at the moment I'm not using it. Train yourself to do that uh, all the time and you'll never have an issue with it. What you don't want to do is to forget about that blade, not retract it, stuff it in your belt, and now you've got a blade uh, injury from that simple thing. We have other retractable blade utility knives here. This one has a larger handle, much better for a larger hand. Same retracting blade action on that one. This one also almost has a bend to the handle, maybe a little more ergonomic. This is my favorite. Also has the same action of retracting the blade into the handle. We also have a flip blade. These work like a pocket knife. We have a button we push here that allows this to swing out and it'll lock into place. These tend to be a little longer, which might give you an advantage might get in the way of what you're doing, but you don't have the advantage of quickly closing this knife like with your retractable ones. So if we push this button, it'll close again, keeping your hands out of the way and it'll lock into place. These also have uh, typically a belt clip on them. So if you don't need it uh, every moment of the day, this might be a good option for you. Here is a smaller version of a flip knife. This swings open and like a pocket knife, it has a lock that you push here, which will allow it to close again. And this is a smaller version. Once again, it's always good to have a knife available. Maybe it's in your pocket. One more, we have a segmented or a snap blade. This is a whole different animal. This one has a blade with segments of, or lines cut into it, where we can break this blade off at different, uh, sections here and we can create a new sharp point every time we break it off. It's like renewing the blade but it all happens within this same blade. We also can retract it like the other ones. Here's a standard blade that you'll put in your utility knife often. They're double-ended. It has this half that would stick out of the knife. When that dulls out we can use flip it over and we can use this half of the blade. It's a fresh blade waiting in the tool at all times. Blades have notches on the top. These lock it into the handle. There's also two parts of the cutting surface on a utility blade. You've got the point that's really important to start a cut and to lead that blade along an edge. And you also have the knife edge. That's the sharp part that will cut materials that are thicker. When either one of those dulls out, this blade needs to be changed. That's why we go through this process of disposable blades and changing them out. So I'll go back to safety when I'm talking about blades here because when it comes to being safe with a blade, a fresh sharp blade is much safer than a dull one. 
A dull blade does not cut well. We add more pressure and then we're out of control. A knife that's out of control is an injury waiting to happen. So make sure that we remember that these blades are replaceable and replace them when they're needed. Another blade style would be a serrated one. This one has some uh, sort of saw teeth in the edge of it. Same points on either end, double-ended blade, same notches. But if you can see those wavy lines, this is more like in your kitchen, it would be a serrated knife. This is gonna cut more aggressively. And this uh, blade maker uh, claims that this blade would be actually more durable or last longer too. I haven't tested that out, but I know that it would cut a more aggressive line. Another blade style would be a hook blade. I love these when I'm doing uh, roofing work or cutting thin sheet materials. All of your cutting surface happens right inside of this hook. It still has somewhat of a sharp point on it, but the advantage to this is, is that when the sheet comes in here, it will cut it without really damaging anything below the tool. That's not the case with these other two. Another safety issue is to talk about these blades as being hardened blades. That means they're brittle. Anything that's hardened tends to shatter if it's stressed. What you're seeing here is a point missing. And with this point missing, something happened with this tool. It was pulled in the wrong way and that tip broke off. It probably went flying. So when we're talking about blades and using a hardened blade, we have to talk about eye protection. So safety glasses are always the first go-to before you start using your utility knife. So talking about blades, let's see how you change one in a utility knife. I have our typical retractable utility knives here. These are identical, just two different colors. And I've got this one ready to open. First thing to do is to remove this screw. With this screw removed, these two halves of the handle come apart. Now we can see the internal parts here. We have a blade carriage and that's holding our blade. This actually comes out as well. So we can take this out and we just need to put a new blade in exactly where this old blade is. So I'll remove that blade and then my new blade, I line up my notch and I drop it in. That's ready to go. So now this needs to go back into the handle. This is the tricky part. We're going to drop it in and it needs to sit where it can slide. We'll check that later. Now we can close the two halves up. Check when you get the two halves together, hold them tight, make sure there's no gap here. If there's a gap, something's not fitting together properly. Now we can put our screw back in and we're ready to go. So I'll go ahead and tighten this screw up. Now we can test to make sure we did this properly. I'll push my button, I'll retract the blade, I'll push it out, it should work smoothly and it should snap out in several different positions. And once it's all the way out, give a, a careful tug on that blade, make sure that it's locked in and this is all one piece. Now we're ready to use this again. This knife here is a retractable knife, but it opens a little differently. You don't need any tools to open this knife. With this one, we wanna push the blade out and then we can push this button right here and this one will actually rotate open. Now we have access to the same parts that were in the other one, the blade carriage, the blade, and when we're done, we can close it like this, lock it in with that button, and we're ready to go. I've got another one here. To me, this is the ultimate in advanced blade changes. This one has a same retractable blade, and to remove this blade, we will push this lever down right here, and the blade comes out. To change the blade, it's as easy as pushing another one in, releasing that lever, and now it's locked in, ready to go. It doesn't get any easier than that. This flip knife is a little different. It's got a lever you pull here, and this actually slides out. You can swap the blade out that way. This closes and you're done. So each knife has a little variation to it. You, you get used to it and you will find your favorite and stick with that. Your blade changes on a segmented blade would amount to uh, extending the blade, finding one of these lines, getting a pair of pliers and a pair of safety glasses, and then prying or snapping off that blade on one of these lines. That gives you a new edge or a new point to work with on this blade. 
When making a cut, we need to think about body position. Where am I in relation to the path of this blade? And if we're making a cut, we need to think about the entire length of the cut plus the follow through. What happens when that blade releases from the material? I don't want to have my body or my other hand in the path of that blade that can only lead to injury. So if I'm making this cut here, even on a straight edge, I would consider being off to one side, no chance of contact of the blade with my body. And I'm going to carry that blade along that line in control and expect it to carry a little further than that cut at the end. I, at any point in there, I'm not in the way of that blade. Another thing to consider is your hand position when using this tool. It should sit in your palm comfortably and your fingers should wrap around it. No fingers too close to the blade. That's, that's a dangerous position. And with the blade extended out, we have pretty good wrist control with this tool. Some bad positions for your hand would be more like this, a too tight of a grip that doesn't give you a good angle or even worse, would be this position here. This is a very uncontrolled position. This tool is about control and finesse. Anything else will lead to injury and bad work. If you can, cut away from yourself. If you're, say, sharpening a pencil, I don't need to bring this blade towards me or towards my hand. I can turn it away from myself and carry it this direction. And I can even use my thumb of this hand to help guide it and push it this is a very controlled situation, something that you're going to do all the time, sharpen your pencil, and there's no chance of injury in this situation. When making cuts, you should let the tool do the work. What I mean by that is the amount of pressure that you put on this blade at the moment that you're making that cut has to do with the type of material you're cutting, how thick that material is, and keeping it under control. If I'm cutting a thin paper, like this right here, it does not take a lot of pressure to cut that. And it does not take a lot of blade either. So I'm going to set this blade at a very a shallow depth and I can put it right in here on this paper and with almost no pressure at all, cut that material and it's done. Cardboard's a little thicker. It might require a little more length on our blade. Uh, still a cut under control with our body and our hand out of the way. I'm not in a hurry, so a slow controlled cut. And if I don't get all the way through the first time, I can run the blade through again. That's what I mean by have the tool do the work, right? We're not trying to force or push that blade through. It's going to cut as much as it will cut the first time. That second cut goes all the way through and now we're done. I mentioned control several times and if you want to make a very controlled cut, you can use a straight edge to get a perfectly straight line. I've got a vinyl tile here. I'm going to put my blade out and I'm going to run it along this straight edge and it will take several passes to get there. I'm pushing with moderate pressure, not heavy or crazy. And when I get to the end of that cut, I'm going to repeat it right along that same line. I'll do this multiple times under control and after maybe three or four times, I should be just about through. If you're shaking or you've got this stressed situation, that's not a good cut. It should be fairly relaxed. It should come loose. So there I have a perfectly straight cut in a material like linoleum. You might need to cut a shim. I'm cutting shims all the time when I'm building. And a shim might require several scores to be cut. So shims will usually be cut across or on the width of it. And this shim, I've made one score, two scores, three scores, and most of the time with a wooden shim, that will allow it to snap off right along that scored line. So you might need to trim a sharp edge off the inside of a plumbing pipe. This is plastic PVC. This tool will do a good job of that as well. I don't need a lot of blade out for this process. Once again, this is a controlled situation that's happening on the inside of this pipe. So as I pull that pipe or rotate it around, that blade is taking off a beveled section on the inside of that pipe. 
And this is called chamfering or reaming the pipe. And what this ends up doing is allowing us to assemble these pipes and they flow better. So this is a common use and a great tool to do it with. A utility knife is good for cutting Romex jacket on this cable. I've got conductors in here. I don't want to damage these conductors. So I want to run a little tiny bit of this blade just through the jacket right down the center of this Romex cable. I don't need much of that blade exposed. And with that small cut, I've, I have cut through the jacket. I can now expose these wires. And the last step of this will be to cut this jacket. And I can do that by cutting away from myself, just like that. No matter what cuts you're making, consider the entire process, keep safety in mind, and think about what the end result is that you're trying to get. I've got this caulk tube, I wanna open the tip, and I want an angle on the end of the tip. It has to be a specific size and a specific angle. Sure, I could cut towards myself and like this, that's not ideal. I could cut away from myself, which is a little safer, but the easiest thing and most precise thing for me to do is to lay it down on a surface, create my angle with my blade, and then cut it off that way. So think about the whole strategy, the whole process of cutting, and how to get to that end the safest and most efficient and accurate way. So there's some highlights about your utility knife. You will use this tool no matter what trade you're in. Keep in mind there's a lot of different variations. Find one that works for you, that fits your hand, that you feel comfortable with. Be safe with it. Stay in control. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> I don't even know.